Hey everybody, it's Dr. Mystical and welcome to the Manifestations Podcast, a weekly podcast where we discuss all manner of things metaphysical, spiritual, and paranormal. I am Dr. Mystical. I'm a medium, intuitive card reader, and paranormal investigator. And if you like this podcast and the other video content on my channel, consider subscribing and sending the alert, as well as following me on Facebook, Instagram, and Periscope at Dr. Mystical. In this episode, we're going to be talking about personal divination. And the topic actually arose from a question that was on my Tarot Tuesday show about whether or not I use that particular deck for my own personal use. And the answer in the show was no, that I don't use that deck, but that I do use other tarot and oracle divination systems for my personal questions. And it really got me thinking about what is my practice and how do I use these divination tools in my own personal world, in my own magic, and what do I do and why do I do it? So in this show, we're going to be talking about what is personal divination, not a big mystery there, how to do it, when and why you might do it, as well as some cautionary notes and some suggestions about systems that I use that you also might find interesting. So stay tuned through the whole episode to hear those suggestions and cautionary notes at the end. So let's talk about what is personal divination. What do you think it is? Think about it for a second. What could it possibly mean for you? For me, personal divination kind of means to suss out or to divine or to seek universal truths and direction for yourself. Now, this might come from spirit or the universe or a deity, god, goddesses, gods, whatever it is that you have in your own personal belief structure, but you're, what you're asking for is an external validation of what your intuition says. And I want you to hear that again. It's an external validation of what your intuition says. Early on in my practice, I used systems like tarot and dowsing, and we'll talk about those in a minute, to get answers for myself. I still do to some degree, mostly as a check for new systems or just as a change of pace. But what I was doing really was ignoring what I knew my intuition was telling me and looking for some sort of external validation for what I knew was supposed to happen or I knew the right choice or whatever it was. Somehow that personal divination gives us more comfort. It gives us some sort of confidence that what the cards or the utensil or the system is saying get, is going to be true or more accurate or more likely to be accurate. And that's what personal divination really is, is that kind of external divining of the universal truths and direction for ourselves in this moment for this situation to answer this question, right? So that's what we're really looking for. So there's lots of different ways to do this. Lots and lots of different ways to do this. And let's take a look at so let's take a look at some of the different ways. I'm going to talk about some external tools and then I'm going to suggest a couple of internal systems or internal methods that you might give a try to and I'll talk about a suggestion for those at the end of the podcast. The first and probably most common is dowsing. A lot of people use dowsing to seek answers to things. If you are an early paranormal investigator, you probably picked up a $10 pendulum and headed out to your favorite haunt and used the pendulum to determine what the spirits in the building were saying to you. If you were pregnant, somebody probably suggested that they hang a pendulum over your stomach to see whether it was a boy or a girl or twins or quadruplets or whatever it may be. So these are pretty common, dowsing is a pretty common thing. Most people do start with pendulums. They don't start with dowsing rods. I went the other way on that. I started with dowsing rods, fascinated by using dowsing rods to find things, to locate missing objects, to follow the trail of something. So I use dowsing a lot in my personal life. I use it for hiking. I use it for looking for things, it's, I, I use it quite a bit. But dowsing rods are a little bit different for personal divination. Certainly you could use them for the yes, no type questions. 
uh, and you can get creative there. So dowsing rods is one way to go, and they tend to be a little bit more expensive. And that's why people err on the side of pendulums. One is they're more attractive, right? You can get pendulums in a variety of metals and minerals and gemstones, each one of them having different properties and attracting different energies. And you can go to a fair or expo or your favorite metaphysical shop, and you'll very easily be able to find one for yourself. Most shopkeepers will tell you the one that's drawing you in is the right one. And you can ask the shopkeeper a little bit about how to use that pendulum if you've never seen one used. Most are really great about helping you pick one and then helping you understand how it works. Some people buy a pendulum mat. I'm not one of those people. I can use a piece of paper. I ask a series of yes, no questions that I know the answers to, calibrate the pendulum a little bit, and then I go from there on terms of my personal divination. Should I do this? Yes or no? Should I go in this direction? Yes or no? And use it in that kind of binary personal divination mindset. So that's dowsing, right? Dowsing rods, dowsing pendulums, and those are very commonplace very easy things to come across. You can use the internet or Google or or Amazon or whatever, but you can also stop by a spirit shop. And I recommend that if you've never done dowsing before because you might be able to get a couple of tips and tricks within the shop and you might find something else that's interesting to you. So that moves us into the next system. And this is really where the question for this podcast started, which is cards and using cards. So as a working medium, I'm always fascinated when people ask uh, about using cards or not about using cards, but more of, I don't really trust mediumship. I trust the tarot. And that's interesting to me because the tarot really is, for me, the physical extension of the metaphysical. Same for dowsing, by the way. It's the physical extension of the metaphysical. The tarot or oracle cards aren't going to give you any different answers than mediumship is going to give you. But it's okay. Again, we talked about that in the beginning, right? It's the external validation of your intuition, of your internal systems, right? And tarot is a lot of fun for a lot of different reasons. The imagery, the icon, the iconography, the the creativeness of them, all amazing As a tarot reader, I'm fascinated by these things and my collection grows every day. And there are cards I use for myself and there are cards that I don't use for my own personal divination. And there's a variety of spreads that you can use or layouts that you can use to answer questions. One very common one is option A or option B, right? We're trying to determine which, which choice we should make and in which direction we should go and we use these we use the cards to tell us these things again you can do that by answering your question being your own querent laying out your cards and divining from the cards what spirit or the universe is trying to tell you it's the same thing internally as a medium and a tarot card reader i'm an intuitive card reader so i'm reading i'm using the cards as a way to visually engage my clients and my querents and have some fun with it. And and so I'm listening to the messages within the cards and also the messages to spirit. And it gives a very rich dialogue when I'm working with somebody. When I'm working independently or individually with myself, there are certain cards and systems that I use. And I'm saying cards here, and I'm saying tarot, and I'm saying oracle cards, and I'm using them interchangeably. Tarot and oracle cards are very different. They do similar things. There's overlaps, but they are different. And that'd be a, that's a great podcast topic of, of a different kind, the, different, the difference between tarot and oracle and what ones do and don't do. So we'll look for that in a future episode of the Manifestations podcast. But for right now, we're talking about cards and you can use them interchangeably for these simple personal divination questions. The real trick, again, like pendulums, is to get a deck or a system that works well for you. That works well for you. If you're new to tarot, maybe something like the Rider Weight or the Radiant Rider Weight, if you want a little more color and pop. 
these, this is a simple deck to use. Once you understand how to use the deck, you can then branch off into these different artists and creators and seeing the different kinds of things that are out there. The Again, the iconography and creativeness and artistry of tarot and oracle are out of this world. I'm in awe of people who can create like that. And, and I'm very fortunate to be a consumer of several decks that I, that I use. And again, I'll give those suggestions at the end of the systems that I use um, that you might want to go and take a look at. So dowsing rods, cards. The other thing you can do that's kind of it, this bridges the, these two, these next two things bridge the gap between the physical external validation and honing your own intuition. And this was something as um, a new medium and working medium I had to learn on my own, which, which was trust your intuition, listen to it. What is it saying? Trust it and allow it to hone itself so that your intuition is usually accurate. This is complicated by a whole lot of different factors, and that's another podcast episode all in its own, the complicating factors of honing your own intuition. But one of the things that a lot of people do, in particular mediums, is they spirit write. So they take a piece of paper and they just get into a semi-meditative state or a full meditative state with their pen in their hand and they write. A lot of mediums will put the side piece of paper off to the side so they're not directly looking at it and they just write down what they have or if they're touch typers maybe they use a keyboard but spirit writing has that physical divination aspect of the pen and the paper much like dowsing but it's relying heavily on your intuition and your meditative state into getting these spirits to guide your writing. So you would how this would work is you would ask the question, I want to know about this, that, you know, is this baby going to be healthy? Is Should I go on this job interview? Should I buy this new car? As examples. The other system that you, so that's spirit writing, very kind of straightforward and, 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 and it works pretty well. I use spirit writing or dream writing. Uh, in my own personal practice, I have a notepad by my, on my nightstand with a pen that's open. And as I dream, I'll write things down without moving or looking. And in the morning, I'll see what the universe had to tell me. So pretty fascinating stuff. The other thing that people use are type of prayer objects. So um, beads or necklaces or bracelets or labyrinths or a whole bunch of different physical objects to allow them into this kind of more intuitive meditative state still personal divination right if you're praying you're asking a question maybe you're thinking the universe deity spirit gods goddesses god whatever it may be and you're entering into that meditative state and a lot of times you're asking for guidance around the situations and environment in your life personal divination so that's the something that bridges the gap these types of beads or necklaces or bracelets or labyrinths or uh, fidget stones or worry stones. These things are all objects that allow you to divine for yourself. Anything that you see used at um, a fair expo or a spirit shop will help you divine for yourself. I have many trusted good friends who use, who use stones and runes and all types of different objects to divine for themselves. And so anything that you see being used with someone else is something that you can use for yourself. And most mediums, most people who are practicing this in this metaphysical divination world are using these things on themselves, either as a way to learn how to use the tool better, or validate that the tool works, or figure out how to use the tool differently. So they're using these tools internally, and then they're externalizing it with clients or querents. Now, the last thing, again, and so the last thing is is purely intuitive, purely intuitive. And so I've taken you from the external, purely external, dowsing rods, cards, to a, a, a middle ground of spirit writing and prayer beads and meditative devices, now to meditation. So I've taken you from not trusting your intuition 
to trusting your intuition and honing it. And so meditation is another thing that a lot of mediums, me included, use to divine the answers, particularly to complex questions. So meditation is one of these things that you can kind of get yourself into, get yourself into a meditative state, change your frequency a little bit, and start to think about, set your intention around the question that you want, and then listen carefully to the guidance that spirit is giving you in your head, right? So people say, this is all in your imagination. Yeah, that's true. That's all things emanate from your brain. So it is intuition, right? If you're not a good meditator, and I am not a good meditator, use guided meditation. And I'll make a recommendation for a guided meditation at the end of the podcast, a, a, a YouTube channel that I really enjoy and I use a lot of. I'm also going to make some, also going to ask you to take a look at something like binaural beats and start looking at sound frequencies as ways to deepen your meditative state. And I'll make some suggestions at the end of the podcast, but also in the show notes below, you'll see the recommendations to some different channels and videos that you might kickstart yourself with in terms of your own personal divination, your own divining for your own answers, right? So we've learned what it is. We've learned the tools that we use, right? The how to do it, so to speak. Now let's talk about why do people do this anyway? And it's not rocket science. They have questions. The divine has answers, right? You need a decision made. The divine will help you make that decision. This is something as old as humanity, as old as people, seeking guidance from the larger world as a whole. And call it what you want. Call it prayer. Call it meditation. Call it divination. Call it whatever. Call it magic. Call it wizardry. Call it witchcraft. Whatever that may be, you're trying to take from the larger universe and internalize the answer in a way that will help you understand. That's what you're trying to do. There's no judgment to be passed here. If you go to a church and that's where you get your answers, that's personal divination. If you're sitting there playing poker with your buddies and you're reading the cards as they come to you, that's divination. It's not to be, it's not, there's no reason for you to judge it. So why do people do it? It usually starts kind of simply. And we already talked about one simple example, right? Is you see personal divination used. Um, I, I know in, in my family, let's find out the, the, the sex or gender of the baby and use the pendulum to do that. It's so fun. So fun. I can't remember off the top of my head whether it was right or wrong, but this is a common thing at at baby showers and this is your grandmother's wisdom passed down right and all kinds of sorts of things so that's that's a easy fun party trick sort of thing but that's personal divination isn't about party tricks is it it's about getting the wisdom of the universe the different realms and different layers and different energies bring them internally and then finding the answers so one of the things that you can use personal divination for is to seek those answers to important questions should I do this? Should I go to, maybe it's not, should I go to the store, but should I take this job? Should I buy this car? Should I move to this state? Should I date this person? Right? These are important questions in your life. This is going to, we're going to, I'm going to come back to that when we get to cautionary notes, right? So why do people do it? To get answers to important questions. Why else do people do it? Well, they're, they have some great concerns about a situation. Should Jimmy go back to see his family? Should Susie get medical help? Should, should, you know, should we go to this place? You know, there's these great concerns going on. So family debacles, um, environmental problems, uh, problems at work, you know, whatever. There's these all these concerns, and we use intuition to kind of suss out the situation and give us guidance on our way through it so that we can get to the other end of it. Nothing is supposed to last forever. The world is fluid, and we need to treat it that way, and we need to expect it to be that way. And then, of course, there's the grand debates. The grand debates. Should I get car A? Should I get car B? 
Should I take job A? Should I take job B? Should I move to this place or to that place? Should I date this person or that person? Should I get married or not get married? Should I get divorced or not get divorced? So on and so forth. There's a common thread through this, right? That we're looking for answers to important questions. You can either choose to work from a very, and I think that this is what I would recommend you, which is work from a very kind of simple type question, easy, low stakes type questions, so that you don't have, um, you know, you're, you're not betting, the, you're not walking into the casino and going to the high rollers table, never having played before. Start with things that are low stakes, you know. Should I have pork chops or chicken for dinner, right? Start there if you're new to personal divination or new to these tools and learn the systems, learn how they work for you, learn how they interact with your own intuition and your own life and how those things work. And then the next question I think a lot of people are, they just want to kind of break, break it down and say, you know, hey, can you, and I get this a lot, can you do this or can you do that? Working mediums, working my friends who ask for, readings um, because in the in kind of the, the mediumistic world we're good about exchanging uh, with trusted allies um, they know to not pressure a reading um, but I, you know and I do this with clients let's find a time that's mutually convenient uh, which means convenient for you and convenient for me any sort of pressure on that uh, hurts readings ultimately but so when to do it is when you feel like you can focus on that question that's the biggest factor. If your kids are screaming and yelling in the other room, you can't focus on the question. If it's getting on the time that you need to take the dog out, you can't focus on the question. If you're worried that your basement is flooding, you, you can't focus on the question. So the big thing is, when can you do it? When you can focus on the question situation problem. You need to look at, that timing and that environmental scan very carefully. You also need to weigh this against kind of the greatest moment of impact. When does this question arise for you? Are you divining something that should have happened already? Right? In other words, the outcomes already happened and you're divining to see what happened? Too late, friends. Is it a brand new question? You just popped in your head on the way home from work. A little too early. You got to look at the point where you're kind of, again, not only environmentally ready, but mentally and spiritually ready to hear the answers. And there's lots of questions that I have in my life. And I see the signs and symbols everywhere that I need to address this mentally, spiritually, emotionally, not ready for that yet. I know it's avoidance and I get that. And I'm not a big avoider. These are major decisions, and, and I know that if I just push my way through, I'll figure it out, but there's a lot of other things that need to be addressed in order for the trouble that that's going to bring to be happy in my, to, to be supported and eased in my life. We'll get there. We'll get there, friends. So when you've decided you're ready, environmentally, spiritually, mentally, internally, you're ready, this is the time where you must stop all action and choose the time of the day where you can be most reflective. For me, it's when I can have some quiet, uninterrupted time. Very rarely is that a weekend because my kids are very excited that uh, I'm home. And so there's lots of activities and lots of projects that have happened during the week that need to be addressed. So weekends are very challenging to get that thing stuff done. Nights are usually better for me. A lot of people do this right before they go to bed. They'll light a candle. They'll set the mood, right? It's, you know, it's like getting in the mood a little bit. Maybe they'll put on some meditative music and away they go. So find some time where you can be quiet and uninterrupted and you can kind of get your, get your space set up, whatever it is you want to do with that. Some people are going to light candles or put crystals out or, or whatever it is they do. So, that's when you should, when you are, ex when the environment is externally ready for you to address it, internally, when you're mentally, spiritually, emotionally ready to handle it, when you can be uninterrupted, when you can have some quiet time to stop, reflect, and then, of course, when you're ready to take action. If you're not ready to do what your divination system tells you to do, then friends, you're not ready. That's important. That's important. If you're not ready to take action, 
you're not ready, period. If you divine something, you're like, nope, don't like that answer. I'm going to come back in a week. You've already made your decision. Spirit knows that, and Spirit's just going to move on. You know, they might continue to tell you that they're right, and they would be, <laughs> because I've found that very rarely is my intuition off kilter that much. So that's when. What is it? Seeking the answers, the universal truths and directions, how to do it, dowsing, cards, writing, um, prayer, type of objects, systems, right? Meditation to get the answers to questions, debates, concerns, situations that you have in your life and do that at a place where you're ready. So that's a little recap. That's ultimately what you need to know. But there's some cautions that you also need to know. And this is something that a lot of mediums talk about, and that is over-reliance on certain systems. So if you're a magician, and that's magician with a K, or you're a Wicca, or you're a tarot reader, or an oracle reader, or a medium, whatever it may be, you know, because we've had these conversations privately, after shows, after expos, in our, in our text message chats, this person comes to me every week. That's not okay. Especially if you're coming to get answers to every single questions you have in your life. Ultimately, as spiritual people and metaphysical practitioners, we're trying to raise the consciousness, raise the self-advocacy, raise the take action for yourself type of mentality. We're growing people in love and light and trying to get their energy and their vibrations higher. So what are some cautionary statements? First of all, don't over rely on things. Don't over rely on your crystals to answer every question. Should I have ham and cheese for lunch every day? No, don't, no, don't do that. That's bad because you're discounting yourself as a tool for the divine, for spirit. You're discounting your value and importance and meaning in this world. And friends, you are important. You are valuable. You do have meaning. And the longer you discount that, the harder it is to get out and see it for yourself. So over-reliance on things. I'm not saying don't have fun with it. Don't, you know, oh, let's have fun. Let's, you know, should we have steak or chicken? You know, let's just, you know, don't have fun with it. But if you're very seriously relying on it for every decision in your life, you're over relying. Pull it back a little bit. Just, you know, tap the brakes, you know, and just pull back a little bit and, and, and learn to listen to your own intuition. And this is also the reason why I told you there's multiple systems, right? If you're over relying on a pendulum or cards, a nice way to kind of pump the brakes and grow is to use prayer reads or to use um, something that helps you get into a meditative state and learn to listen to your own intuition. You'll grow as a person, I promise you. The other thing is that you use it for a laser focus. In other words, you already know the goddamn answer, and you're just trying to get the cars to agree with you. If you're using it in that way, like, I, this is the situation, this is the outcome, and the cards need to tell me that, and they don't, you're going to be frustrated. This bullshit doesn't work. But Spirit's telling you, and you're ignoring, and they're going to turn up the volume. And they're going to keep turning up the volume until you hear what it is that they have to say. You're not trusting your intuition. You're not listening to your guidance. You're not listening to spirit. You're trying to bully spirit into something you've already come up with. So if you're over relying on it, you're doing it wrong. If you have a laser focus on it, you're doing it wrong. You need to allow your intuition to guide you, right? There are rights and wrongs in life. There are two rights. There are two wrongs, right? There's all kinds of that stuff. But just going through the activity in a trusting, thankful, appreciative way is what you need. So those are my really two big cautionary statements. Over-reliance, right? You're doing this every day, every hour. You're doing it every meal. You're doing it every afternoon. You're Every, every day. You're doing it so, so much that you're becoming almost addicted to it, right? That's over-reliance. We don't like that. And laser focus. But... 
I also gave you a little hint here, and that is to be thankful, trusting, and appreciative, right? Trusting and appreciative, trusting and thankful. Thank you, Spirit, for this guidance. I trust you, and I'm going to see about that and do that and see what comes. And that's going to help you learn to trust your intuition. So finally, what does Dr. Mystical use in his own personal divination world? What are some systems that he uses? Or well, I use, right? I'm talking about myself in the third person. That's not okay. What are some systems that for me is not okay? What are some systems that I use? So I already mentioned that I, I use pendulums on occasion, right? So I have a whole bag full of pendulums. And if I'm teaching a dowsing workshop, I have a, I use those pendulums to teach people dowsing. And I use them to, in my own personal world. I, I take a piece of paper. I draw out a little pendulum map with maybe letters and numbers or yes, no's. And I calibrate my crystals and I, and I go through that experience, right? I, I, it's not something I do a lot of anymore, but it is something that I do on occasion. I also mentioned that I love dowsing rods, and I do, and I use dowsing rods a lot in my own personal divination. Simple yes, no's, um, or to divine where something might be, or, you know, we play games in the house, like hide an object, and I'll go find it with my dowsing rods. Always blows the kids' minds. But, so I use pendulums a lot for my personal divination because it's small, it's compact, it's not this massive experience. I also use the Rider weight, and so despite the fact that I have a number of decks, I use the Rider weight almost exclusively in my personal divination. It's a deck that I trust. It's a deck that I learned very early in my life. It's a deck that I relearned later in my life, and it's a deck that I'm extremely familiar with, and one that really likes me. And so it's a system that I'm, I've got, grown to use, right? I also use another, uh, I hesitate to call it an oracle deck, although it, it, it sort of is. It really is a magic, and magic with a K, system called the 40 Servants. And you've probably seen that on my Tarot Tuesday show. I've, I've used it, and I really need to thank, you know, Anna Davina and E2 Metaphysical Energy Metaphysical Shop for turning me on to that and Tommy Kelly for creating it. And it's a system that I've really used in my own personal divination. So I use it in terms of both the sigils, so sigil magic, but I also use it in terms of adding a, adding a, a layer of chance or magic to the situation or to determine what it is that I should be should be using in these situations. So I use it a little bit more complexly than answering a question, but it is a system that I use. So pendulums, rider weight, 40 servants. Occasionally I'll throw in another deck of cards just to, you know, for fun. Recently I, I, I got the Santa Muerte Tarot by uh, Fabio Lestrani. That deck, that deck calls to me. So I, I have a suspicion that it's going to work its way into my own personal life and i think that's okay so those are kind of some systems now in terms of kind of prayerful meditation i use a finger labyrinth so it's like a larger walking labyrinth and i use that to sometimes to divine the answers to a problem or to get into a semi-meditative state and if you're not familiar with labyrinths Google that. I'll put a link in the show description so you can go see what labyrinths are and how to use them. There's probably a walking labyrinth near you, and I recommend you start with that. Um, I can't always just break out of the workday and go walk a labyrinth, but they are there, and I can use them, And but I have a, one on my desk that I use for this type of thing. And then lastly, I use guided meditations by the honest guys that's the name of their youtube channel oh it's, it's maybe not lastly but i use the honest guys meditation they're really creative i need that in meditation because i can't get out of my own head i my energy level is way too high my brain is functioning at, on multiple projects at once so i need that creativity to break through that and get me into one place i really do admire the work that these guys do 
I think they do this in, in large part because they just enjoy doing it and they've made it available to the world, which I think is an outstanding gift. And so I'll link to their channel in the show description, but also a few, a few recommended types of meditations, things that I, ones that I really like. And then lastly, we're talking about frequencies, again, to access a meditative state. And you can YouTube binaural beats and look for different things, but it depends on what you're really trying to do. If you're trying to focus, you're looking at alpha waves. If you're trying to sleep, you're looking at delta. And if you're trying to do some work while you're sleeping, in other words, almost a wake, almost a uh, waking sleep or a waking dreaming state or astral travel, theta band, super, super effective. And something that I use to access that part of my work is, is those types of things. So I'll recommend a few in the show description for you so you can take a look. And that brings us kind of to the end of the podcast, really, which is where we're at. It's a good time to kind of wrap this up. So let's recap really quickly. What is it? It's a way to divine the universe, the truths of the universe, the direction of the universe, spirit, God, gods, gods, goddesses, deities, whatever it is you want to call it for yourself, right? It's a way you can use dowsing rods or crystals or cards or prayer meditation, prayer devices or meditation to get there. And you use it to answer the great and important questions in your life, making sure you're not relying on it for everything in your life and not trusting yourself. And then you do that in a place and a time that you're ready and you can be uninterrupted. Now, friends, this brings us to the end of the podcast. Thank you so, so much for joining me. If you like this podcast, I appreciate that. Hit the thumbs up, subscribe, ring the little bell on YouTube. Those things help me. Follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Periscope, slash Dr. Mystical. Very easy to find. So I really do appreciate that. Share this video out with friends if you think that they're interested in personal divination. Sometimes having a workout partner is a good way to go. And until next time, friends, be well, treat each other with kindness and love, and bring joy into the world. We need more joy. We need a lot more joy.